Welcome everyone. It's a snowy day, so I thought I would do some boat calculation work. Here are the numbers. I'll go over the results and explain how I came to those numbers. The first column is the arm in millimeters. So you get down to the end of the boat and it turned out it was 10 meters long or 33 feet. Next, I did the pounds displacement, which turned out to be 9,346 based on a theoretical water line. I'll show you that later. The average displacement moment, which is calculated based on pounds displaced times the arm, ended up to be 5,626, which puts the buoyancy midpoint at station 23. I know that says 24, but the first number is used up by the titles, so I'll just reduce each station by one. So buoyancy midpoint, station 23. The total weight of the boat in pounds is 7,236. That's just what it has so far. The average weight moment turned out to be 4,229, which is the weight times the arm, and that gives you foot-pounds. That ends up to be at the weight midpoint of station 23. So these turned out to be at the same station, but the reality is 4,229 is a lot less than 4,499. And the buoyancy midpoint was at 5,626, which is much more than 5,498. So really, this should be down a little bit, this should be up a little bit, and that would actually make the boat tip a little bit toward the bow, the way the weight and buoyancy is distributed right now. So right now, according to the numbers, if I were to place this boat in the water, then it would be slightly nose heavy, slightly bow heavy. This keel is placed pretty far towards the stern of the boat, but it just works out that the displacement and balance is that way because the design is different than a normal boat. My boat stays wide as it goes towards the stern. A traditional boat is going to cut in quite a bit more. And it also stays deep, so it's still displacing water all the way to the back. The line that I measured off of, the level line that goes from front to back, is here. That's how I calculated displacement as far as the depth goes. If you look at a traditional boat design, if this is the water line, the bow of the boat is not displacing water, nor is the stern, and that's why they put the keel more towards the middle. It's called an integral, and I decided that I would base it on a parabola. So this is slightly less accurate than a method I'll show you after this, but it was simple for now, and it saved me hundreds and hundreds of measurements. I'll probably go through with the full measurement later on, but for now this gives me a ballpark and gets me started. Here's the equation of a parabola. This is the beginning of the integral that we're going to process area with. This is the next step, and then this is probably the only result you care about. I measured the depth which is from that line down to any particular point on the bottom of the hull. I measured the width, which is side to side at exactly that level point. And I also measured the arc, but that was just for the sake of the weight of the boat. I don't need the arc for this calculation. Just need depth and width. So if you're looking for a quick and dirty way to calculate some displacement, this will do it. So we're just taking the area of a parabola. 
This is a sample calculation that I used specifically because the book I'm going to show you used it as well. So depth goes in everywhere you see the word depth. Width goes in everywhere you see width. These are the numbers. Once it's put in, you can see how easy it looks. And my final result was 32. So that gives me an area of 32 square inches. Here is a calculation in a book by Norman Skeen. I hope I pronounced that correctly. So his calculations are 4 inches tall and 12 inches wide, which is why I did the example that I did here. The results that he came up with were 34.2 square inches and 34.7 square inches, depending on whether he used the trapezoid rule or the Simpsons rule. And he'll explain that in that book if you want to download it. I think it's for free on the internet. I got it for free. So there's a difference between 32 and 34 because this model that he's using isn't actually a parabola. And my boat's probably not a parabola exactly either. So for example, this measures 3.89 and on a parabola it would have measured 3.77. So there's where the difference in the area came from based on this calculation compared to mine. So I'll benefit in the future by taking more depth measurements from side to side. So this is a cross section of the boat if you're looking from the bow toward the stern and I need to take more depth measurements in order to get a more accurate area measurement.